Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to do a KitchenAid food processor attachment with commercial style dicing kit review. I got the KitchenAid food processor attachment for Christmas from my grandparents. Thank you again so much. It has been a great time saver in the kitchen. So I wanted to do a review of it and a demo of how to use each of the attachments and how to assemble. I will also be sharing with you a hash brown recipe that I have perfected over the past year. It's just like the IHOP shredded hash browns if you've ever had them. I love them and it took a while to get right so I will give you my secrets and give you all my thoughts on the KitchenAid food processor attachment. So throughout the day I used almost all of the attachments for everything that I ate that day which is funny so this is basically what I eat in a day. Not really updated so maybe if you want to see that give this video a like and let me know in the comments. But anyways I got the KitchenAid Artisan limited edition light and shadow stand mixer for Christmas as well from my parents. That is what I'll be using throughout the video today. I did an unboxing of it if you want to check it out and I love it. Can't go wrong with a KitchenAid stand mixer. So check that video out if you want to know more, but let's get into the food processor attachment review. So starting off with the shredding attachment, we used it for breakfast with potatoes for hash browns. Like I said, it's an IHOP dupe. <laughs> it makes it 10 times easier to grate cheese and any Anything else really so it's probably one of the most used attachments aside from the dicing one you can obviously make the hash brown recipe without this attachment you can shred the potato by hand but this makes it 10 times easier and obviously when you're hungry in the morning you want to get it done quickly so I started by peeling the potatoes and slicing them into manageable pieces for the attachment the chute is only so big so you have to slice them into quarters probably depending on the size of your potato and I did two for both me and my husband, but this made quite enough for probably a family of four if you're gonna have like half a potato each. So we saved the leftovers for the next morning. So I took out the box that I store in the cabinet with all the blades and the discs for each. It comes in this nice little case so you can put it all away and keep it all stored together, which is nice. And then I also grabbed the actual attachment machine out of the cupboard along with the lid. To get started, I always remove the bowl first, then the attachment hub and to assemble the food processor attachment, you just insert it into the square hole and make sure that the puzzle piece basically aligns by having that little silver notch go right into the stand mixer, just like a puzzle. Then just screw on the knob and you're good to go. I always have the manual handy when I'm using this attachment because it's important to know what speeds to set when working with different vegetables and cheeses and the different discs. So keep that on hand, but for shredding, you need the white adapter piece and the shredding disc which can do fine and medium shredding. I chose medium for today so I kept the medium side up after placing the adapter in. Then you just fit in the disc on top like a puzzle piece. Everything's very intuitive. You'll know when it fits right. Then place the lid on by turning counterclockwise until it locks in place. There will be little arrows on the side that shows you when it is in place properly. And just a little safety tip, I do all of this while it is unplugged. So once it's plugged in you can remove the feeder tube which there are two depending on the size of food you're feeding into the attachment which is nice then to start it you just turn the speed dial on the KitchenAid to the required speed based on the manual and the food you're actually using this required a 10 but you could easily do it at a lower speed if you're not comfortable at the beginning then you just slowly feed the potato into the chute and it'll shred and oh don't forget a bowl underneath to catch all your potato because otherwise it'll be all over the counter and that would be Sad. This is so much faster than hand shredding and also the potato ends up being not as wet. You'll see that the potato can leave a pretty big mess on the attachment. I usually try and salvage as much as I can and as carefully as I can because of course you're handling a blade and then I take everything apart to clean everything fully. So aside from the KitchenAid attachment, the silver part of the machine, that is not waterproof. Do not stick it in the dishwasher, do not immerse in water, that will ruin it, but the rest of the attachment are waterproof and dishwasher safe, which is the best bonus of this machine. Saves so much time. So what I do with the actual attachment machine, I just wipe it down to the best of my ability because potato can get super juicy and all over it. So I do that and then use a damp cloth as well to get any of the little potato bits that need to be cleaned after the fact. Then I loaded everything into the dishwasher, the adapter, the liner that goes into the attachment, the lid, 
everything is safe to wash, including the disc. So basically everything that comes in the box, as well as the lid and the liner, are safe to put in the dishwasher. But to continue our hash brown recipe, with manual shredding, you will have to really drain your potatoes. They can get quite liquidy. This machine actually does a really great job at not making that so much of an issue. I usually just pat it with a paper towel if there is a little bit of juice in there, but usually it doesn't mess the recipe up. And then I just season with salt and toss the potato shreds till they're evenly coated. And I heat up some oil on a nonstick pan at around medium heat and also put a bit of oil in the potato shredding just to make sure it's all coated. But not too much. Once the pan and the oil is heated up, just add a thin layer of the potato in the pan and just spread it out evenly. And it's okay if it's turned a bit pink from the air, that'll go away once it's cooked. And then just let it cook and cover it just so the inside of the potato does get cooked until it has a nice golden brown on the other side. Then comes the hard part, the flipping. So I usually break it into a few pieces and then I do my best to flip in quarters or sometimes a half if I can manage. And then I just leave it to cook until the other side is also golden brown. At around a medium temperature, depending on how fast it's going, you don't wanna burn your potato. And I do this uncovered for the last bit. We had our hash browns with a fried egg and that was it for recipe number one with the attachments. So later on the dishwasher was done. So I took everything out of the dishwasher, dried and reassembled the machine. So you can see how I do that here. You always start with the liner, then follow with whatever you're choosing to do. This time I was going to start dicing. I placed the dice disc, making sure the square blades are by the hole. Don't put it the other way, but again, everything is very intuitive. There are are grooves or kind of like handles on the side that fit in the attachment like a puzzle. So you'll know if it's correctly put in by whether everything fits. From there, you'll have to add the blade that's the long blade on top so that it can slice and dice at the same time. You also have access to this tool that you can manually push any extra bits through the dicing disc at the end or while you're doing it, if you have multiple vegetables to dice. Then you just simply install the lid and begin dicing at the speed dictated by the manual for your vegetable choice or fruit choice, whatever you're using. So I prepared cucumber and onion the same way as I did with the potatoes earlier so that they would fit down the chute. If they were smaller, I could have stuck them in the smaller hole, but I didn't. I just kind of stuck them in as much as I could and pushed it down using the tube to get everything through. And also in between the cucumber and the onion, I did stop the machine and clear out the food with the manual tool, like I was talking about earlier, just so that nothing would get stuck as I was going. I was making a salad with diced vegetables on a bed of lettuce. I don't usually do this. I usually slice my cucumber and usually dice my onion, but I also had a tomato that I wanted to just show you how it worked. The downside with dicing tomato with this attachment is it ends up turning into mush. It will be great for a homemade salsa because you get those diced pieces of tomatoes, but also all the liquid from the tomatoes. But if you're looking for kind of diced tomato for a salad, you might want to just do it by hand. It will probably be better, but not as fast. The salad was delicious though, so no regrets. <laughs> the last thing on the menu for the day was a mushroom cream sauce for a chicken dinner. I didn't film it, but I ended up cleaning out everything before doing this next step. But I pulled the slicing disc out, which fits right in with no adapter, then placed the lid on and began inserting the mushrooms, trying to keep them all facing the same way. The thing with mushrooms and this attachment is you won't make them all look uniform. The only way to do that is to slice them by hand. So if you're looking for that signature mushroom look, you might want to do it that way. For this recipe though, it really didn't matter. It cut the prep time in half and they didn't need to look all perfect because they were just cooking in a sauce. But with what they call their exact slice system, you can adjust the slicing thickness via the lever on the left. It's not the most exact, but depending on what you're slicing, you can put it to the left to do thin slices and kind of in between or to the right to do a thicker slice. I chose to the left for a thinner slice and you can see that the mushrooms are quite messy, not all perfect, a lot of little mushroom bits, but 
totally fine for this recipe. The one thing I didn't demo was the julienne attachment. It is great for vegetables that you want to be nice and thin and long strips, maybe like carrots for coleslaw or cucumber or vegetables for a salad or something like that. I tend to not use the julienne attachment all that much at all, so I didn't really use it in that day, but I will show you how to assemble it. You just grab the julienne disc as well as the attachment used earlier in the day for the shredding, and you put in the attachment first and then the disc. You'll know when it fits in because if you put it the other way, it just won't it won't go in. Then you just place the lid on top, making sure it's locked like usual, and then go ahead and julienne whatever you're making. One little thing to note is if you do want a longer strip, say with like a carrot, you'll have to put it lengthwise, so not like this, but like this down the chute, so that it does the carrots or the cucumber or something like that with a longer slice. And obviously think about how you're cutting the, and prepping the vegetables in order to do that and achieve that result. And that was it for our full day using the KitchenAid food processor attachment with commercial style dicing kit. My overall thoughts on the KitchenAid attachment, I really do like it. It saves a lot of time in the kitchen, but of course there is a big cost to it. It is $199.99. If you're just seeing yourself maybe dicing vegetables more than doing any shredding or anything like that that it can do, I would probably just go with one of those pressed down vegetable dicers. My mom has one and she loves it. I love it. I use it all the time when I don't have access to the attachment and it is quick and easy and more or less inexpensive. But if you're looking to do all of this and you already have a KitchenAid, this definitely is a must have attachment if you're able to spend the money on it. It'll also probably save you money in the long run because if you're someone who likes to buy your produce or cheese pre-sliced or pre-shredded, it's definitely more expensive to do that than just to get a big block of cheese or you know the produce as like the whole version and then you can just after your grocery shop do it in bulk shred your cheese dice your vegetables and store them in the fridge for the week and you have access to them and it's quick and easy to just add to your recipe so if you see yourself as that kind of person and you have the money to spend on it I think this attachment is probably one that you would benefit from and I like it a lot so I'm really thankful to have it along with the KitchenAid I love my KitchenAid and of course my pasta attachment I have a video making pasta with it. So if you want to check that out, that's up on my channel. But yeah, those are the two attachments I have. If you have any other attachment recommendations that you love and use all the time, let me know in the comments. I would love to know because I would love to get them in my future. And if you did like this review, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers. You subscribing would be a great help uh, in that journey. So thank you so much for watching and subscribing. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!